Hi everyone, it's CJ. We are starting our weekly vlog off a day late because I didn't feel like vlogging yesterday. It's really hot in Portland still. <laughs> not to talk about the weather, but I haven't been sleeping well because of it. Which is not my favorite thing. Um, I just kind of hung out yesterday, finished up work, and then read The Death of Vivek Oji. I'm really liking it so far. It's a very mysterious book. I feel like the characters are kind of clouded in mystique, if you will. Uh, there's a lot of uncovering going on, but I also like the tension of kind of the reader being presented with the plot and like the immediacy of that at the same time. Uh, the writing is really good so far, and I've heard Freshwater by the same author is supposed to be phenomenal, so I would definitely look into that. Uh, but yeah, I'm making good progress on that. Looking forward to reading more at my lunch break. So we'll check in then. Cool. You guys, look how freaking cute Brittany from Slanted Spines is. She sent me some bookmarks in the mail, as well as the sweetest letter and some stickers and some magnets. I love her channel. I think she has great taste in books. She's just a sweet, enthusiastic reader. And we love a bookmark around here. So thank you, Brittany, freaking sweetie. She's saving the USPS, guys, one letter at a time. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday at like 7 a.m. I'm gonna water the garden. We haven't had a, wa a garden check-in in a while, have we? It's kind of slowing down for this season, okay? But I'll give you a tour give you a tour of what's up. Tomatoes, freaking gorgeous. We have some ripe ones ready to pick this morning, so I'll do that after I water. All of our lettuce and kale is done. We have these reject carrots that never really took, but Kiki still believes in for some reason, and he refuses to let me pull. And then I have a pretty crispy cucumber plant in here with one last cucumber, I think. And this was supposed to be a pepper plant, uh, but we didn't get any peppers from it really. These are supposed to be, God, I can't, don't even, even see this. Yeah, that pepper right there is supposed to be red and they never turned red. So I don't really know what happened there. And then these, this in mess is basically four rows, one row of four plants of green beans that got way too tall. And then our tomatillos, which like created this monster. The tomatillos are still producing. So that's cool. I have some to pick today. Then we have our insane pumpkin. You're not even ready. You're not even ready. Let me show you my favorite pumpkin. There's probably like 10 or 15 in here so far. But, ah, <gasps> that's my favorite pumpkin. And then we have like a little one. There's like a few baby ones in here. But that one pumpkin, and all these leaves is really what it's giving us, which is a very weird way to make a plant, to make fruit from a plant, but I guess that's how pumpkins roll. Another baby one. I don't know if you can tell how big this is, but it's <laughs> obnoxious. Okay, I'm gonna water. I just had a pretty traumatic experience. <laughs> I was on a Zoom call for work. I heard some yakking behind me. Josh was right here on the bed, mid throw up. I grabbed him in my arms. He was already puking. It was too late, everyone. He was throwing up already. My, my computer's right here, screen was right there. Spewed everywhere, everywhere. He spewed all over the bed, got on the floor, got on the duvet, my quilt. Uh, sheets are already in the wash. I'm gonna have to watch the duvet insert as well, and the pillows and the quilt. I have never seen so much vomit come from an animal, and my coworkers were like in shock, and they witnessed it all. <laughs> really wish someone would have been recording because I think I could have made like national news coverage with, you know, most embarrassing things to happen on a Zoom call. So I guess I'm gonna be doing laundry all day. It's exciting. This is my exciting quarantine work from home uh, tidbit of the day. Great. Look at this beautiful wrap I'm having. It's buffalo tofu, avocado, lettuce, onion, tomatoes in here with a drizzle of ranch, baby. 
Look at that breaded tofu. Ugh, wow. Happy Wednesday, everyone. No, it's Thursday. Happy Thursday, everyone. This week is flying by. I worked really late last night and then uh, had to make dinner and then was too tired to read, so I haven't read. God willing, I will read on my lunch break today. That is my, my saving grace. But not a ton going on. Uh, <laughs> boring vlog this week, but every day is exactly the same. So what do you anticipate? I finished it. I have thoughts, but I don't want to spoil this for people because I know a lot of people haven't read it yet. And it's pretty fuzzy right now. So if this is on your TBR and you don't want a spoiler, um, don't watch like the next minute until I'm out of this pajama shirt. Then you'll know it's okay to watch. This is really good. The writing was impeccable. Uh, the characters were well developed. I loved the framing around gender identity. It was tragic and haunting, but I'm still left with like this sticky kind of residue of wondering why Osita and Vivek had to be related. I don't understand that. I don't understand what that was adding to the, the book's plot, um, except for obviously kind of being forbidden, right? Just like another cultural thing that is looked down upon um, where they're located. So I would recommend this book. The resolution at the end felt kind of hurried to me and kind of surprising. Um, I'm glad Vivek didn't die in a more traumatic way because I think Obviously, a lot of trans women die at the hands of violence every single day, and it was an accident. So that's a big spoiler if you um, are thinking about reading this book. But overall, I'm just still really confused about why Vivek and Osita's relationship had to be familial. And I think there's like an allegory about family versus chosen family in there with his group of girls with her group of girls, uh, but I don't know what it is yet. I think I'm gonna read some reviews on Goodreads because that usually helps me break down um, other people's interpretations of, of the text. So I'm excited to do that. Good, it was good. It's definitely worth it. I definitely wanna read uh, Freshwater by this author. I heard it's amazing, but something a little off there. I got this in the mail. I ordered it after watching, ugh, I forget their channel name off the top of my head. I just subscribed to them and I'm loving their videos. It's like something, something in the beers or something. I will put it on the screen, um, but their channel is great. I think we've really similar taste and this is one of their favorites of the year. I've heard nothing but amazing things about this book. Um, it's been recommended to me a few times. It's a memoir, but each chapter is I think framing her own story within kind of literary tropes which sounds so weird and inventive and interesting. I am really excited. I also know Phoebe Bridgers the musician loves this author and she wrote like a short story for her new LP Punisher. Um, so just like another sad girl recommendation that vouches for for this book. I'm into it. Happy Friday, everyone. I've had a busy morning with work, but I have some thoughts I wanna share with you. First of all, I have kept thinking about the death of Vivek Oji and I posted on Instagram, I was like, hey, I just finished this. If anyone else has, let's talk about it because I don't wanna like post my review because I know it's kind of a buzzy book and there's a lot of spoilers. Grace and I from GK Reads were chatting and I brought it up with her. I was like, I don't, I still don't understand the incest um, plot line and the sexual relationship with your own cousin and what the author was trying to do there. And she sent me a link to a really great interview with the author of The Death of Vivek Oji and then River Solomon, who is another 
um, author and writer and I think the author makes some really good points in their argument for why that relationship took place and kind of just walking the line of like perverse love and kind of uh, letting the reader form their own opinions of that because I, I don't think it's heavy handed at all the way that they they write about that very close familiar relationship um, and it didn't I mean I felt a little perversed by it because obviously that's not like something that's super common or at least talked about sexual relationships within your immediate family um, but it does happen in the world and uh, I like that they let the reader form their own opinion of it. Like I said, it was done with um, not a heavy hand. So I think that's a really good interview to watch after you finish that book. I put it in the description box down below if you're interested in reading it. I started reading In the Dream House last night. Already incredible. <laughs> like really incredible. Like I have a highlighter out and I'm highlighting stuff. Um, very dark and heavy. If you've ever been in a toxic abusive relationship, huge trigger warning. Uh, it's dredging up some feels for me. I'm sure like it's resonating with a lot of other readers as well. And I can't wait to finish it. It's flowing by because they're all little fragmented tidbits really. The new Bright Eyes record got released this morning. <laughs> so that was the first thing I did. I listened to that in bed and it was great. I'm a very, very, very long-term Bright Eyes fan, which is embarrassing, but I am what I am, people. I'm just a emo teen girl, unfortunately, evolving into an adult. What else? Oh, I got a new rug! My new rug came in the mail. Okay, so you're gonna have some vision. You're gonna have to have some vision when you're reviewing this. Think about the cabinets painting green and what it's gonna do this space, okay? Alright, hold on. Yes. I got a pink rug. It's pink and it has some green in it. Isn't that nice? I got it from Etsy, like a vintage Moroccan rug seller and it came from Morocco. Um, obviously this rug won't be here anymore, but I think it's gonna look great once the cabinets are painted green. And I'm definitely leaning towards the lighter green with the rug. I think that's the right decision. Um, but let me know what you think. And yes, this rug from Morocco has come before our dining room table, which is shipping from New York. <sighs> I can't stand it anymore. Good morning, everyone. It is Saturday, August 22nd. Uh, last night, me and Kiki just hung out and we played Luigi's Mansion 3 for like two hours. Uh, really, he just watched me play it. For two hours but it was fun i recommend downloading that game i also got a lot of progress done on in the dream house it is very depressing i would definitely not recommend it before bedtime it is not a light read at all obviously it's about domestic abuse so not the best thing to fall asleep to have any thoughts kiki just looking at power generators, just looking at power generators. Um, also, Kiki got me this really cool pen for highlighting my book, and it's a different color as you can see. One of these really cool guys. So thank you, Kiki. The CJ Reads vlog subscribers, thank you as well. <laughs> Kiki just got done lining this one too. What? Nothing. Aren't you at peace? I'm at peace. I just finished in the dream house. It was very good, very fucked up. Very relatable, very human, very surreal. It was very good. I wanna read her body in other parties now. Uh, so I read that and I was thinking I would read Tender is the Flesh next, um, put out by Scribner. They actually sent me this review copy in the mail, so thank you, Scribner. I picked up this next because it's Women in Translation Month and this is a translated book written by a woman, so that sounds great. Um, I think it's supposed to be kind of fucked up. Yeah, this is this is a 
the synopsis on the cover. Working at the local processing plant, Marcos is in the business of slaughtering humans. K Kiki's watching basketball. Though no one calls them that anymore. So I think this is gonna be like a surreal, um, maybe dark dystopian book, which sounds, sounds like a book. <laughs> love the cover though. I love like devil imagery. I don't know why I always have like red devil imagery, like cartoon Halloween devil. Uh, great. I'm gonna read my book because Kiki's watching, watching basketball. I ordered burgers for dinner, I'm so excited. And then probably gonna play some Luigi 3 later tonight. That game is so fun. I had such a fun time playing it last night. This is my plan. Look at this gorgeous evening light coming in. So peaceful. Happy Sunday, everyone. We've had a pretty laid back Sunday. Went to the farmer's market, went to the grocery store. No surprises there. Uh, we actually went to Trader Joe's though and stocked up on some of the sauces that you can only buy there. Like the jalapeno taco sauce, the pepita salsa. So good. It's like 2.30 right now and I've just been laying in bed and watching YouTube videos and watching Brittany Bathgate's vlog right now. I really like her channel. She's more like a lifestyle fashion vlogger but she does have some book content sometimes but her vlogs are really relaxing they're usually like 40 minutes long and are just like very meditative and zen so i love watching her vlogs and i've also been on and off between videos reading tender is the flesh because it's very short chapters i'm on page 91 been a while since i've read a dystopian book <laughs> so i think the pacing Oh my god, my hair's so crazy. It's a no hair wash day, I'm sorry. Uh, the pacing feels a little chaotic and the story is definitely, like the plot of the book is definitely dark. There's a lot of graphic scenes about like body horror, I guess I would say. Or I don't think it's specifically trying to be horror, it's just about the human body and it's kind of horrific, so I'm calling it body horror. So I'm reading that. I'm sure I'll finish that today. Um, only because I don't have a lot going on and just gonna hang out in my room and read. Hang out. Um, yeah, that's about it. I'm gonna start editing this vlog because I'm really behind. And prep my house for Monday morning. I need to put away all my clothes, clean the bathroom, just set the household chores up for a productive week. You know what I mean? I have the Sunday scaries. Oh my God, do I have them. Sometimes they're so bad, you like waste half of your Sunday being scared of Monday. And I don't know why. Anyway, I'm gonna log off, sign off the vlog. Josh wants to say goodbye as well. Hope everyone had a good week and I hope your week, when you watch this tomorrow, is off to a good start as well. Let me know what you've been reading. I feel like I got a lot of reading done this week. Three books, right? Yeah, not bad. Great, bye.